We are not at Oak Haven today. We are on vacation in Pennsylvania, on the eastern side of Pennsylvania, um, in the Pocono Mountains. Um, right now, we are in the Delaware Water Gap National Recreation Area. Um, and we were talking about this plant, um, which is Pachysandra. This is uh, Japanese Pachysandra, or Japanese Spurge. And um, some of you know that we are working on a project with our church where we're doing a whole um, native plant um, restoration, trying to, to get rid of some of the non-native plants in the landscape and replace them with native plants. And there was someone who recommended um, Pachysandra in our landscaping. And uh, it came up in conversation, well, is Pachysandra, Pachysandra serves a place, it's not native, um, but it serves a place for landscaping, but is it invasive? Is it going to cause a problem in the natural environment? And my opinion was that I'd never seen it invasive before. So I thought it was okay to use in a landscaping um, as long as it was in a controlled manner. Now, there are 15 states in the United States that list um, Japanese Pachysandra or Japanese Spurge as invasive. So that makes me wonder, why is it that some people call it invasive and some people um, just say that it's um, just a very aggressive um, landscaping plant? And it is very aggressive. Um, so my conclusion is that it it can it doesn't seem to spread out to other areas. It doesn't seem to seed off. Although you can buy seed of Pachysandra, it doesn't seem like it spreads out and you find it in places here and there and other places in natural areas. In Ohio, I don't think I've ever seen Pachysandra out in the wild. So anyway, while we're here walking through this um, natural area we found some Pachysandra and it's growing in what you would consider to be a natural area. Whether it was planted here or not, I don't know, but it gives you an idea of what, it, what happens, how it can be invasive. So here you see this patch of Pachysandra. It goes all the way to where it drops off um, towards this, uh, the, 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 into the floodplain of the Delaware River over here. And the only thing that is growing in here is Pachysandra and poison ivy, pretty much. There's a few ash trees growing up. I'll show you an area over here that is, it's just Pachysandra as far as the eye can see, which just scares me when I see it because I think, wow, could that be in our, um, our woods? Um, so while we were here and we're trying to evaluate that, how is it working? We're looking around at the landscape. And if you walk with me over here, you see what Julie pointed out as these incredible yew trees, okay? So these are, are yews that were probably planted as, you know, small shrubs and have grown into these beautiful trees. Again, a non-native uh, plant, but it, it gives you the idea that this is not something that would grow out um, and naturally seed off into the woods. And this has been here for a long time. So perhaps this was a homestead, This someone lived here and they had yews and they had um, pachysandra and they had vinca and some other things growing here and that's how it got here it did not just invade into this area it just someone planted it here and it did what pachysandra does very well which is just spread and knock out everything that it could possibly be which is exactly what you want when you plant pachysandra in your yard you want it to be really dense not let anything else grow but you want to keep it controlled. So let me just talk about Pachysandra a little bit. Um, interesting little plant. It's, a, it's an evergreen plant. This is, this is the Japanese Pachysandra. So it has a, the, uh, the flower is terminal here. It's a Pachysandra terminal, terminalis. Uh, I'll look down what I write about this. Uh, it has a terminal um, flower stalk. Um, there is a native Pachysandra, Allegheny Spurge which is Pachysandra um, procumbens, but the flowering stalk comes from down below. It's also found further south from here, not necessarily here. Um, so this is the, the Japanese Pachysandra. So let me, let me show you the potential if you put it into your garden and then let it get out of hand. So as I'm taking you over to this place, there's plenty of invasive species here. If you look on the ground here, it is just a carpet of uh, Japanese stilt grass, Japanese stilt grass with its shiny stripe down the middle here. Um, down at the base of it, you can see Vinca 
um, which again is probably planted. It's considered an invasive species some places. Um, whether or not this was planted here or this came in some other way, I'm guessing it was planted. It's probably part of the landscaping of some something that was here at one point. There's also privet along here. Beautiful ferns. I don't know my ferns. I'll be honest. I don't know my ferns what this is, but uh, it, it seems to be competing with the Pecosandra very well here. So if you come through here and we've got this beautiful pathway and this wonderful ravine here over on this side, we've got the Delaware River. Um, it, it's just a beautiful natural area, but the Pecosandra just spreads forever. How far down does it go down the slope? It doesn't go very far down the slope, but it, it, um, it flows over the slope, flows down the slope here. If you look down the valley there, you can see the Pecosandra is flowing up the, the slope on the other side, covering most of the slope on the other side. Super, super invasive. Does that mean we shouldn't put Pecosandra in our gardens? I'm saying no. I'm saying that when, if you keep it in your garden and you keep it contained in your garden, it's probably fine. But definitely keep it contained in your garden. We're going through the same thing right now with vinca. We have vinca in our garden. We are very careful to keep the vinca in the beds and not to spread out into the woods. Anyway, there's Pachysandra, a little um, discussion about Pachysandra and whether or not you should have it in your, your garden.